Those stories shortly. But first, to the bankrupt playboy. He's a barroom brawler who's enjoying a life of luxury, spending the money of everyday mums and dads who have been left with nothing. Scum is low life. Armed with a bar stool and out of control, this bankrupt playboy is keen for a fight. Nathan, you are not a millionaire. You are a loser. Captured on CCTV during this bar brawl, he lashes out at innocent bystanders in a violent confrontation. We'd just like to ask you some questions about the houses you've been living in. But this con man's antics aren't confined to punch-ups. He talked in millions of dollars. He didn't talk in thousands of dollars. He talked in millions of dollars of what he, what he had. Mate, you're living on the waterfront in a mansion, driving a fancy Range Rover in your bank. Mate, we haven't got a waterfront in a mansion. Nathan John Morrissey is a wannabe wolf of Wall Street who fleeces hard-working families of their life savings just so he can live a life of luxury. I mean, I'd like to live a lifestyle he is, but I have to go to work every day. He introduced himself to my husband as Nathan the Millionaire, an entrepreneur. Stretch limos, lavish parties, fancy bling. Nathan Morrissey is even telling people he played for Richmond in the AFL. In reality, he's a bankrupt playboy who uses multiple aliases. He doesn't pay staff their wages, instead lining his own pockets. So what do you do with it? He's also a deadbeat dad who owes tens of thousands of dollars in unpaid child support. To top it all off, Nathan and his new wife Rochelle owe thousands in unpaid spur fines. Not that you'd know it, because they continue to claim Centrelink benefits. And despite all of that, they're still splashing out on new assets, including plastic surgery for Rochelle. Love the new twins, baby. You look incredible. And damn fine on my arm, I must say. Oh, it's really hard, yeah. It's really hard. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you're right, babe. <laughs> It's an expensive piece of real estate, a waterfront property on the Gold Coast and only minutes from the beach. So how does a man who's just filed for bankruptcy afford to live here and drive around in a car worth $100,000? Well, the answer is a warning to anyone with superannuation or their life savings in the bank. We're licensed by ASIC, Australian Securities and Investment Commission. We can provide the information to you and Australian residents for free. This is Nathan Morrissey's new business. The lying con man and bankrupt welfare cheater set up yet another company, Contact Project Marketing, in his wife Rochelle's name, cold calling households and offering, of all things, financial and investment advice. If you want to come with us to do the investing after that, then great. Mate, we haven't got a waterfront of a mansion, mate. We're not, we're not bankrupt either, so we'd get your information from Do you want to have a look at your bankruptcy notice here? Yeah, it's a bankruptcy notice, mate. Big deal. People do stuff. Financial advisor, that's yeah. what he was. That's what he was telling us he was. Parents Daryl and Teresa Mirandez have lost $17,000 of their retirement savings to Nathan Morrissey's fraudulent ways. They thought they were investing money that would secure them and their children a nest egg. We were in it for the long run for the kids, you know. We thought, well, we're not going to make money out of it for us in 10 years' time when, you know, when we retire, you know, well, the money will be there for the kids, you know, we can sell the houses and let the kids have a good future. Hey, what'd you do with the money? Where'd all their money go? $17,000. He's doing well, isn't he, for someone who's got no money. And, you know, my question is how many more people have he, has he done this to? Russell Simp is an electrician by trade and relies on doing overtime to get ahead. You know, I'm not living in a flash mansion or anything like that. You know, I've got a 20-year-old car. That's what our savings are for. He invested eight and a half thousand dollars and also let Nathan Morrissey control his superannuation. Now his money funds Nathan's lavish lifestyle. I mean, he's a fraudster. He's a thief and a fraudster. No two ways about it. And he should be stopped. Rude out the front of the office. And Pretty fancy car, mate. It's my wife's car. How many okay. businesses do you own? Mate, just, just give it a rest. <laughs> 
Yet despite giving financial advice to trusting people, Nathan Morrissey is now more than $30,000 in arrears on his child support payments. And it's not just his kids losing out, Nathan Morrissey is also ripping off you, the taxpayer. As of last month, Centrelink was still trying to recover nearly $6,000 in new start payments it made to Nathan. Meanwhile, Rochelle has also just applied to receive a partnered parenting payment. People like him, we know they're just going to throw the money away because it's not his money anyway, so what's it, what's it doing? But in the ultimate act of arrogance, this self-described business magnate is unbelievably still trying to get more taxpayer money. In the last month, applying for a Centrelink concession card and more New Start payments. Have you been paying your child maintenance? Are you, Are you kidding me? I've got two kids, I pay for them all the time, mate. You paid all your child maintenance, yeah, have mate. you? Yeah, mate, yeah. Sure? I'm ring the ex-wife, go on. Ah, Nathan, to do that, we'd have to mention your real name, Nathaniel Philip Temby, before you had it changed by deed poll. And that's not the only name Nathan uses. He's now telling prospective employees his name is Daniel Bratina. Yeah, I had a better deal. It's Daniel's business. I kept myself as a silent partner. Are you a silent partner in this business? Mate, right, does it really matter? Why don't you just... Look, you got what you got? You happy? No, we want to find out the answers. Are you... Who runs this business? Right. Do you own it? Got You're bankrupt. With it. You set it up in your wife's name. Nathan Morrissey also has a history of being a bad tenant. Well, we have to clean up the mess, beg the banks to give us a bit of time to recoup our debt. Elena and Joseph Flidgick and their daughter Alana rented their home to Nathan and Rochelle. But the pair owed $20,000 in unpaid rent and damage to the property. They even helped themselves to the landlord's furniture. I just think it's pathetic. He can spend money on plastic surgery for his girlfriend, but he can't afford to pay rent. Ranald and Elizabeth McNeil have a similar story. All up renting to the Morrissey family cost them almost $10,000 in property damage and rent arrears. And that's despite both couples using a real estate agent who told them Nathan's references checked out. Well, I came from the country and I've always been the sort of person that was taught to trust and, and, and I don't trust people very much anymore. We just like to ask you some questions about the houses you've been living in. Can you tell us how you left the McNeil's house? What happened to what happened to all Elena's property? What happened to the furniture? The furniture you took from their house. What about the rent money you didn't pay? We confronted the Playboy and welfare cheat at his new offices. We also caught him bragging about his latest venture. This is despite the fact it's against the law for a bankrupt to set up a new business. Yeah, yeah, no, I've got six other businesses and stuff like that. You tell people you own six businesses on the coast. Is that true? Is that true? No, mate, it's not. Yeah. So why do you tell people that? Well, what are they talking about? Caught out telling more lies, Nathan Morrissey refuses to say where his victim's money's gone, leaving these devastated families with no hope of recovering their lost savings. Can get the cameras out of there? No, who's lying? Can you just tell us the answers? Yeah, you can, you can, enough's enough now. OK, you got your story. He reckons he's bankrupt. Where's the money coming from? Obviously mm -hmm. us. Meanwhile, Nathan Morrissey has also been banned from his local pub after this fight. It's believed a good Samaritan intervened in an argument between Nathan and Rochelle, which prompted him to completely lose the plot. Not content with throwing punches, the con man picks up a bar stool and continues his rampage. Even when staff kick him out of the pub, the shirtless menace refuses to calm down hurling the hotel's menu board back into the beer garden. A man unhinged, he's now returned to his waterfront home where, as we go to air tonight, he and his family are still living. S scum is low life, you know? And within this, and we're just hoping that he gets caught out and stops taking anybody else down, you know? He's, yeah, just scum. It's a long history, but hopefully the game's just about up for Nathan Morrissey. Now, if you have any details about him that you think we should know, send us an email.